Good morning. Folks, many times you hear discipline takes away freedom. Have you heard that? Yes, no. How many believe it's true? Not true at all. Folks, discipline actually gives you freedom. In fact, we need to find what is discipline. Folks, discipline is a track to run on. Many times people say, I want to be free. You take the train off the track, it is free, but where does it go? You take the steering wheel off the car, it is free, but where does it go? Nowhere. Discipline is a track to run on. It dis does not take away freedom. It actually gives you freedom. Anybody here who has a two- or three-year-old child, raise your hand. Two- or three-year-old child. Ma'am, three-year-old, two-year-old? Yeah. Does your child love chocolates, ma'am? Yeah? And if you took a nice big box of chocolate, would your child love it, ma'am? Yeah? And the way kids are, when they like chocolates, they like to have the whole box in one go, yes, ma'am, yes, not. True? And let me ask you, if you let your child have the whole box in one go, what will happen? Your child will fall sick. But if you discipline your child to have two or three every day, they would enjoy it and stay in good health longer. Am I right? Did discipline take away or give freedom? Give freedom. Two, if you could drive on any side of the road any time, you think you'd get home? No. But if we follow the discipline of the traffic law, we'd get home a lot faster. Yes, no. So discipline takes, does not take away freedom. Folks, it actually gives you freedom. We need to learn from the animal kingdom, folks. Many times you've got to be unkind to be kind. All medicine is not sweet, but you got to have it. All surgery is not painless, but you got to take it. Nature teaches us a lot. We all have seen that big animal, the mama giraffe, 20 feet tall. A mama giraffe gives birth to a baby giraffe standing. Too tall it can't sit. All of a sudden, the baby plops down from mama's cushion and falls down on earth. Bang. Baby is weak and bobbly, can't get up. What does first thing mama do? Mama goes right behind the baby and takes a little head start and comes and gives one kick. And the baby jumps up. I'm sure giraffe kicks must be pretty hard. I haven't had it. But the baby jumps up. But well, the legs are weak and wobbly. The baby falls down again. Mama goes behind and again gives one more kick. And the baby jumps up again, but the legs are weak and wobbly, and the baby falls down again. And mama goes behind and again gives one more kick. Mama keeps kicking till the baby is able to get on its feet. Why? Because mama realizes that the only chance of survival for the baby in the jungle is to get on its feet. Otherwise, they would be what? Yeah, they would be eaten up by the predators. Question is, is this an act of love? Yes, no. Folks, discipline is an act of love. Parenting and leadership is not a popularity contest. Parenting and leadership is not a popularity contest. It is an act of love. Sometimes you've got to be unkind to be kind. I'll share with you a little poem. In fact, one time, a judge convicted a robber and asked him, do you want anything to say? He said, yep, send my parents to jail too. He said, why? He said, when I was a little boy, I stole a pencil from the school. My parents knew about it, never said a word. Then I stole a pen. They knew about it, never said a word. And then I started stealing other things, never said a word. Gradually, I started stealing in my neighborhood. 
and here I am. And if anybody belongs in the jail, my parents do too. Folks, that does not absolve him of his own responsibility. But the question is, did the parents do their job right? Yes, no. Folks, parenting is not a popularity contest. I want to share with you a poem I came across, and I don't know again who the author is, but let me share. A parent says, when my children are old enough to understand the logic that motivates a parent, I will tell them, I loved you enough. I loved you enough to ask you where you were going with whom and what time would you be back home. I loved you enough to make you take a chocolate back to the drugstore, even with a bite in it, and tell the storekeeper, I stole it yesterday. I am here to pay for it today. I loved you enough to let you save your own money to buy a bicycle, even though I could afford to buy you one. I loved you enough to stand over you for two hours to get your room cleaned and act that would have taken me only 15 minutes. I loved you enough to let you see tears, anger, and disappointment in my eyes. Children must learn. Parents are not perfect either. Do you know of any perfect set of parents, folks? There are none in this world. I loved you enough to let you accept responsibilities for your actions, even though the penalties were so harsh that they broke my heart. But most of all, I loved you enough to say no. And I knew you would hate me for it, but those were the most difficult battles of all. I am glad I won them, because in the end, you won them too. Because in the end, you won them too. Folks, parenting is not a popularity contest at all. Sometimes you've got to be unkind to be kind. Folks, going back a few years ago, I read an article in the United States and it said, we, we people, you know what we people means? Not Mr. We. We people, over 50, I am over 50. We are the no generation. You know what the no generation means? When we ask the parents, can I buy this? They said, no. Can I go to the movies? No. Can I go to the restaurant? No. And when they said no, they meant no. And from the eyes you could tell, you better not ask again. Could you relate to that? Yes, no. Yeah. He says, we're the no generation. He says, our kids are the yes generation. Anytime they come and ask you, can I buy this? Of course. Can I go to the movie? Oh, yeah. Can I go to the restaurant? Of course. And if perchance you ever said no, they say, why? And now you explain the why. Then they again ask you why. You explain the second why, they again say why. And now the third why, and the fourth why, and the fifth why. Why does the sun come out of the east? I don't know why. That's the way it is. When you go to the doctor, and he looks at your blood profile, and he says, you got malaria. You say, why? What do you mean, why? Because he's went through 30 years of medical school because he knows more than you do. That's why. Folks, let me ask you a question. Does a four-year-old have the same maturity level of a 40-year-old? Yes, no. You can explain all the why you want. Sometimes they don't understand. Because I say so. 
Folks, I'll answer all the why you want so long as the why comes out of inquisitiveness. That's fine. But sometimes people who have never learned to obey can never learn to command either. Hello? People who have never learned to obey have never learned to command either. Folks, parenting is not a popularity contest. I see the time here. I could go on for three days, folks. Now, do you want me to go on a little bit more or stop here? Go on. Where's Richard? <laughs> Richard has to cut short the lunch break, my friend. Folks, I'm just going to wind up quickly here. A couple of things I just want to share. Many times you hear people saying, I just don't have enough time. Time flies. Time comes and goes. Folks, it is flying right now. Time just comes and goes away. There's not enough time to do anything. Have you heard that? Yes, no. Yeah? Funny part is, how many believe it's true? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, folks. Time comes and goes away. Raise your hand. <laughs> not true at all. Folks, Time does not come and go away at all. Time is eternity. Time is standing still. We come and go away. We come and go away. You see, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Today is a gift. That is why they call it a present. That is why they call it a present. Someone asked a medical doctor, how did you pick your field? He said, going back 50 years, I used to live on a farm, and I was 10 years old, and I had a little brother, six-year-old, who fell sick and sick real bad. And he said, we had a family friend who was a medical doctor, so our parents called him, and he stayed overnight because that was a crucial night. And all night the doctor kept struggling with the kid. And next day morning the doors opened, and the parents walked in, and they asked the doctor, is our kid going to live? And the doctor said, not only is your kid going to live, but he's going to live a good life. And he said, the moment the doctor finished the last words, I saw a smile of relief come on my parents' faces. And he said, I was 10 years old. And he said, the moment I saw the smile of relief on my parents' faces, that's the time I made up my mind. I will be a medical doctor who puts smiles on people's faces. Folks, when you go into a profession with service in mind, money comes so fast you can't even count. But when you go into a profession only to make a buck and not to serve, it does not come. And if it does, it is short-lived. And if it is not short-lived, it gets you no goodwill anyway. And if you got all the money in the world and no goodwill, is it worth having? Yes, no. And folks, the other day I heard a speaker saying that there was a study conducted on lottery millionaires and they said within two to five years, close to 90% of lottery millionaires were broke back again. Isn't that sad? So what business are you in, sir? You are not in the sales business. You are in the business of putting smiles on people's faces. So am I, so are you. Everybody is in the same business of putting smiles on people's faces. Folks, let me ask you a question. 
If everybody in your organization started realizing this little philosophy that we are in the business of putting smiles on people's faces, what would happen to productivity? What would happen to productivity, folks? Go up. But isn't that what we want? Yes, no. Folks, when a person says, I am good because I don't steal, cheat, lie, that's not true. If they don't cheat, it only means you're not a cheat, but that does not make a person good. If a dozen, if person does not tell lies, it only means they're not a liar, but that does not make a person good. And when they say, I don't steal, it only means you're not a thief, but that does not make a person good. Folks, go ask a doctor. Absence of ill health does not mean good health. Hello? Similarly, absence of fault does not make a person good. A person becomes good when they actually do good. And that is what they call proactive. Hello? That is what they call proactive. My friend, I'd like to read something out to you. Two items. This is something that changed my life. Again, I wish I know who wrote this. We don't have the author's name. It says, don't quit. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you are trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns, and many a failure turns about when he might have won, had he stuck it out. Don't give up. Though the pace seems slow, you may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tints of clouds of doubt. You never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. <laughs>